Okay, <clears throat> trigonometry section 3.1. Go nice and slow here for you. All right, first thing we're doing is we're converting degrees into radians and radians into degrees. Remember, degrees are how you look at an angle from an angle perspective, meaning out of 360. Radians is a length measure, okay? But they, they're, they're convertible. Okay, so if um, 240 degrees, how do you convert that to radians? All right, really simple. You're gonna multiply by pi over 180, okay? And then you have to reduce that. And as you can see, I believe 40 goes into both 240 and, no, 40, is that right? Uh, 60 goes into both 240 and 180. Here we go, Woo. 60 goes into 240 four times, 60 goes into 183 times. So it's four pi over three, okay? This one, multiply this by pi over 180 as well, no problem, <clears throat> okay? And then that ends up being, if you cross cancel, of course, it's one ninth, one over nine. So it's pi over nine. The last one, pi over 180 again. I believe 45 goes into both of those. 45 goes into 135 three times and 45 goes into 184 times. So negative three fourths pi. All right, then going the other way, going the other way to convert, you're gonna do 180 over pi, okay? Just do the reciprocal. The pi's of course always cancel out. And then three in the 180 is 60 times. And then <clears throat> two times 60 is 120. There's your answer. This one, I'll do it again, 180 over pi. Okay, these cancel out. And then this goes into 180, uh, 30 times. 30 times seven is 210, okay? And the last one is 180 over pi, okay? And then four goes into 180 45 times, okay? And then 45 times seven is 315, okay? It's not too hard. All right, the next ones, understand and calculate a reference angle, okay? Understand and calculate a reference angle. All right, here we go. So um, reference angles, we've done it before. If you're in quadrant one, I put okay. Okay, meaning if it's 60 degrees in quadrant one, then it's going to be 60 degrees in reference angle. Quadrant one angle is its own reference angle. Quadrant two, you'll go 180 minus alpha. Quadrant three, do the angle minus 180 and quadrant four, 360 minus that angle, okay? All right, so another trick here is to cut, just do kind of a semi-circle approach because remember the reference angle is how quickly you can go back to the x-axis uh, and its absolute value. So, <clears throat> Um, you got to understand, you know, just basic elements of a semicircle. So let's go over this one first. Four fifths. So four fifths pi is right about here. Okay. Remember, 90 degrees is half pi. So four fifths is right here. So you just have to ask yourself, what is this piece right here? Well, that's obviously going to be one fifth because remember, pi right here is one pi. So if you can get to the number one in the fraction, that's going to be the 180 degree mark. If you get to two pi, that's going to be that's going to be 360. Okay. All right. So the next one. So 11 eighths. So that's one and three eighths. It's so it's less than a half. So it's one and three eighths right there. Correct. So I gotta go back to the x-axis in the quickest way. So I know right here is eight of the eight eights, okay? Because 11 eights, I went eight eights plus three eights. So to go back was just three pi over eight. It's really simple. Okay, the next one is negative, but it shouldn't bother you. It's negative one and a fourth. Oops, clear that. So it's negative one and a fourth. So that's right about there. So it goes this way, negative one and a fourth, okay? Negative one and one fourth. So look at it this way, negative one 
and one fourth pi. Well, the quickest way back to the x axis is going to be just that one fourth pi. We we always a reference angle is always positive, so we're going to say we're going to say one fourth pi or pi over four. Okay. Next one is uh, nine sevenths pi, so that's one and two sevenths. So let's look at let's look at that one as being. Let me get a different color here. Let's look at that one as being. Um, let's go blue. I think this would be being one and two sevenths pi. Okay, one and two sevenths pi. All right, so I'm gonna go one and two sevenths pi. So right about there. Okay, so it's one and two sevenths. So to go back to the x axis will just be two pi over seven. You take you take the first part out. Take that part out. And then it's going to be whatever's remaining. Okay. So let's look at the next one. This is a little trickier. You really need that semicircle approach here. So it's one and seven elevenths. So one is here, one pi is here. So it's one and seven elevenths. Keep in mind, seven elevenths is more than a half. So it's going to be right about here, I'm going like this. Okay. So I got to go back to the x axis, which is right there. So if it's 7 elevenths to get to here, then it must be 4 elevenths to get back to the x axis because we're dealing with whole numbers. We got 1 pi here, you got 2 pi here. Okay. So 4 elevenths back to the x axis. Okay. The next one is negative eight and a third, similar concept. So uh, negative eight and a third is more than, a, it's, it's one, excuse me, that's two and one third pi. Two and one third, remember that. So two and one third, you go around once and then you go a third, it's right there, because it was negative. I think it went the wrong way because it's negative, try it again here. So we're going to go negative one and one third, right about there. Okay, negative two, excuse me, negative two and one third, negative two and one third. Okay, so negative two is taken care of, but to go back to the x axis in that semicircle approach, that is just one pi over three or one third pi. Okay, I think it's really, really important that. Um, you draw it out. I think that's pretty critical. All right, next one. This is two and three pi over 10. So the two is taken care of in the drawing. We're gonna go around because that's two pi and then it's three tenths. Three tenths is less than a half, so it's quadrant one. So then we're gonna go bam right there and it's gonna be just three pi over 10 going back to the X axis or the semicircle. Okay, this one, that one's a little tricky. I think, okay? So that's one and, let's see here, one and eight thirteenths pi, negative. So negative one is to here, right? And then eight thirteenths is over a half, so it's right about there, okay? So I'm in quadrant, um, I'm in quadrant uh, two, uh, one again, okay? So if that's eight thirteenths to get back to here, it's gonna be just five pi over 13. Because five plus eight is 13. And then the last one is um, uh, negative one and three pi over seven, okay? Negative one and three pi over seven. So negative one and three pi over seven, okay? I'm gonna go back to the x-axis, okay? Back to the x-axis, and this is gonna be three pi over seven, okay? All right, cool. That's, some kids have a hard time on that, and you may have to have additional support, but there's a basic explanation of it. All right, now, this stuff is really important to be able to do. This is crucial. I like to change this to degrees first because everybody understands degrees, but you don't have to. If you think in radians, you're more than welcome to do this in terms of radians, but I just think in terms of degrees. Okay, 
So let's get this started. So we're going to change this to degrees. So I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. And I'm doing 3a. All right. And that's going to be 210 degrees. All right. So 210. 210 is, is, is 30 degrees past 180. So the reference angle is 30 degrees. The sine is the y, correct? And as you can tell, the y is short here. And if you remember, short is a half. And we're in quadrant three, so the sine or the y is negative. OK? B, the cosine of 5 pi over 3, I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. OK? And that's going to be, was that 60 times 5? That's 300 degrees. OK? That's 300 degrees. And um, 300 degrees is 60 degrees from 360. So it's down here in quadrant 4. So we got a 30, 60, 90. And the cosine is x. And x looks short here. And the short is a half. And in the quadrant four, cosine is positive. We have a positive half. OK? I recommend you go degrees, picture, and get the answer. OK? Uh, C is a tangent. Tangents can be hard. Multiply by 180 over pi. Is that 30 times 6? So it's negative 210. Negative 210 is right here because I went this way, correct? So I'm in quadrant two. So this is short. This is a half. This is long. This is negative radical three over two. And tangent is y divided by x. OK, perfect, which, which is y times x. OK, so it's radical 3 over radical 3. And that's um, so it's radical 3 over 3. I left it um, this way at the, in my notes, but if it's negative, by the way. OK. Pretty cool. All right. Let's do the next one. OK. You slide this up just a little bit to help you out here. OK. So we got the cosine of negative 5 pi over 6. Cosine of negative 5 pi over 6. Let's multiply by 180 over pi. OK. So we got, uh, let's see, 30, that's negative 150 degrees. So negative 150 is, um, let's see, you're right here. Okay, that's negative 150. Okay. And so um, <clears throat> we want the cosine, and the cosine is the x. And as you can see right here, the x is very long. And long is negative radical 3 over 2. And we know it's negative because we're in the third quadrant. OK? The sine of this one, 5 pi over 4, I'm going to convert to degrees. And that's, uh, let's see, 45 times 5 is, I believe, let's see here, 45 times 5 is, uh, I believe that's two, 315, OK? OK, because one, two, three, yeah, three, three, 315. I'm sorry, 225, 225 degrees. There we go, because it's yeah, one, two, three, four, yeah. So, and um, sine is the y, OK? Oh, it's negative. Sorry about that. Let me let me do this one over again. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Negative five pi over four. So it's negative two twenty five. Negative two twenty five is right here. My bad. Okay, and that's a forty five. We love forty fives. And the sine is y, and that's right there. And that's going to be radical two over two on the forty fives. Okay. Now f is um, one eighty over pi. 
convert that. That's, uh, let's see here, 61, that's 120 degrees. 120 degrees is a 60, right? It's right here. And we know that's tangents, we need both of them. <clears throat> so X is negative and it, you can tell X is short, the cosine short, while the Y is long, radical three over two. And if you remember, tangent is Y divided by X. That's negative radical three. Okay. All right. Cosecant of seven pi over six. Cosecant of seven pi over six. Multiply by 180 over pi, and that's 210 degrees. So here's 210. It's a 30, right? It's a 30, reference angle of 30. Cosecant has to do with the sine, and the sine right here is small. It's a half, and it's negative because we're in the third quadrant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of that, so it's negative 2 over 1, which is what I have in red here, Nick. Okay. Okay. H. So 180 over pi. And that ends up being 30 degrees. Okay. So 30 degrees. I'll draw it right here. And 30 degrees is uh, they want the cotangent. So I need both sine and cosine. So sine looks small, a half. Cosine looks long, radical three over two. Okay, and then cotangent is um, y, excuse me, is x over y, so it's radical three over two divided by one half. Okay, so that's radical three over two times two over one, boom, and that's just radical three, which I'll circle a bunch of times there. Okay, last one. The secant of negative five pi over four. So this is 180 over pi. Okay. And um, again, that's 45 times five. And that's going to be negative um, 225, right? Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, negative 225. Okay. So negative 225 is actually quadrant um, two because I'm going this way, negative 225. So secant is the inverse of the cosine. The cosine is the x, and the x and a 45 is radical 2 over 2, and it's negative. So turn that upside down, okay, for the secant. So that'll be 2 over radical 2 is negative. Multiply both sides by radical 2 over radical 2, okay? And you get two radical two over two, which you cross cancel and you get just negative radical two, which I have there. Okay, that's section uh, 3.1, trigonometry. Thank you.